Welcome to DevLogic. On this episode, we discuss the apprenticeship route into software development. My guest Adam was an apprentice over 12 years ago, and in this time he has grown from a software developer to a head of operations position. We discussed the pros and cons of an apprenticeship, and we covered a business cost and salary involved. Personally, I feel like this is a route that isn't utilized enough in the software development industry. So thanks for joining me on this week's episode of DevLogic. I'm joined with my guest here, Adam Alberson, who's the uh, head of operations at Yellow Grid. And we're going to be discussing the, the benefits of, of apprenticeships, really. So, so yeah, thanks for, for joining me, Adam. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, good, good. Excited, excited to, to get stuck in. When I thought of the apprenticeship route into software development, you know, you, you sprung to mind going into to your background, you was a, an apprentice, what, nearly 12 years ago now? Yeah, 2011. God, That's yeah. Bad. Uh, long time yeah, ago. Long time ago. And just running through your journey, you joined Yellow Group nearly 12 years ago on an apprenticeship mm-hmm. route where it was, it was route into tech. Who's doing a bit uh-huh. of coding, a bit of uh, DevOps, a bit of customer support, sort of all rounded. And and throughout the years, your roles developed into many uh-huh. different areas. And, and now you you sit ahead of operations, so you're basically looking after apprentice, apprentice apprentices as well, so full life cycle. So so uh-huh. yeah, I, I feel like there's a there's a lot of companies that spring to mind that hire junior developers, and I don't even believe that they're looking at the apprenticeship route. So it could uh-huh. uh, could shed some light on that. And on the flip side as well, there's people that are trying to break into the software development industry and they're looking at coding bootcamp courses and it's costing, you know, up to seven thousand, ten thousand pounds for them to use course uh-huh. when potentially not even looking at apprentices uh-huh. uh, for apprenticeships. So so getting started, do you want to just sort of run me through a brief overview of, of, of your journey at Yellow yeah. Grid and going to apprentice? So sure. like I said, I started uh, in 2011 as an apprentice. Uh, at the time, it was a quite a small company and it was an apprenticeship mainly in it was just general IT, you know, general desktop support, stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but because uh, when I started, my boss encouraged me to pursue any sort of aspect of IT and technology I liked, and I got into uh, development. But when I say development, I was I was making a I made a city website. That was my first little task as an apprentice. My boss said, uh, "Do you want to do a bit of HTML?" So I did a bit of HTML, yeah. learned HTML, made this very basic city website. Then I started looking at uh, obviously CSS stuff like that. And then I wanted people to be able to log into my website. So I got into PHP and yeah. uh, stuff like that. And then uh, because I was an apprentice and from a company's point of view, apprentices are very low cost. My boss encouraged me to do all these things that are no benefit to the business. But he can yeah. see I can mold this this lad into what I can use him in so many different ways. If he gets into development, it opens new doors. So we one thing we always liked about apprentices is one, obviously they cost effective for the company, but two, they're always the young people who don't really know what they want to do yet, but they always have, uh, uh, they always have like a passion for tech. Obviously that's what the company yeah. is, see us. And it might be different aspects of technology or IT. And we always just say, if you, if you like it and we can monetize it in a way, we fully encourage you to do it. So uh, like me with, web, with the web development, that spiraled yeah. on to, having a full development team now uh all of which who have been apprentices and we're constantly looking for apprentices because they bring new ideas to the company mm. it, from an apprentice from another candidate's point of view it's a perfect job to get because it's you might want to jump on these uh boot camps which like you said cost lots of money you can learn on the job and it's yeah. very low pressure because if you start a job as a junior dev someone's expected of you straight away whereas mm-hmm. if you're a apprentice Nothing's really expected yeah. of you because you're young. The whole point of being an apprentice is, is you're un- inexperienced. So no one's expecting you to reinvent yeah. the wheel straight away. So it's a great way to 
learn your trade in a very low pressure environment. Yeah, right. and on the on the side of that as well, if you if you get the apprentice and you realise development isn't for you and you're more sort of DevOps focused or you want to be more product focused, you can always pivot as well because you're not set in stone that's what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Touching on that, most apprentices are, are quite young and with that, I had the assumption that there was a, an age bracket. For some reason, I thought it was like 16 to 24, but any age can, any, mm -hmm. sorry, anybody at any age can get an apprentice, apprenticeship and mm -hmm. software development. So that was super interesting. And I found out that the the average salary for an apprentice, and it probably weren't this when back it back when you was an apprentice, mm -hmm. but the average salary for a, for an apprentice was just shy of um, twenty eight grand. Mm -hmm. uh, which which is, is touching on like a junior dev salary. Um mm -hmm. if you if you think of it as well. Um Cool. Sorry, mate. I'll flip back to to your journey. So, obviously, you started um, with desktop support, had the passion for coding, and then how else is the, you know, I know you can't cover everything over twelve years, but how else has your role pivoted? So it's moved definitely more over into the operations side of things, definitely in terms of that infrastructure. So, Yellow Grid is a company. We're a, a telephony focused company. We resell a, uh, well, we're not resell, we're a, a partner of a phone system called FreeCX, which is a C-sharp based phone system. Uh, we're the largest partner in Europe. So we sell license, basically sell more licenses than anybody else in Europe. And we basically sit at the top of the tree and resellers come to us because resellers have to let end users, the resellers come to us to provide yeah. them with solutions. One solution is uh, hosting, uh, like just cloud hosting. So do lots of cloud hosting which is obviously infrastructure uh then we do lots of custom integrations for the phone system because as i said it's written on c sharp we yeah. have api access to it we write these custom apps we also do lots of crm integrations so uh recruitment companies for example uh like bullhorn and vincere they're not natively supported by FreeCX. we've written a custom integration for that and basically what we do is we provide a telephony company so reseller of ours, all the tools they need to be successful to sell a phone system to the end users. So we do the, obviously the phone system, like I said, we are the UK distributor of a brand called Fanville, which is a desk phone, a voice over IP phone. Uh, we sell whew, tens of thousands of those. And part of my job as well on the development side of things, as well as on my team is to service that flow of sales of phones from the sales Start signing the selling of the phone, and yeah. moving on to the dispatch of the phone, then the support in the monitor of the phone, and then the same phone system, selling the phone system, making a phone system, supporting a phone system, monitoring a phone system. Right. And that's basically what we do. God. Yeah, and I've, I've actually used your products, so FreeCX. I've used it integrated mm. with, with Bullhorn. Um, mm. Yeah, which is class. It's uh, I'm not just saying it as well. It's I, I remember some voiceover systems I've used in previous companies where there's like an, a delay and they're like, you can't hear them. And it's mm. just, it's just, and then someone will ring in and then it's not integrated with the system. And you're like, who's this? Yeah. You're like, you just called me. And then it might've been somebody else. Well, that's the, yeah. if it, obviously I, I'm biased because obviously yeah. uh, we sell a lot of it, but we, we have throughout our years, uh, cause we didn't, we didn't start off with free CX or we didn't, we didn't, we, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't part of the company around free CX. We've kind of, moved in that direction but we've trialed lots of other phone systems along the way and mm. nothing quite lived up to free cx and it's just a fantastic phone system mm. one thing you mentioned about the dev team that you've, you've hired them through apprentice apprentices mm -hmm. which is a uh, it's super that's the word i'm thinking of super niche really to hire a dev team mm -hmm. through our apprentices um usually um usually you know people are high they're spending hundreds of thousands hiring dev teams. So what's been, what's been, how's it worked for you hiring apprentices through? Well, it's, uh, with, what? with, when we get an apprentice, the thing we look for most is, uh, that they have an interest in the subject. So any form of IT and they can show they have an interest, not like come to the interview and say, Oh, I did X, Y, and Z at school. Show yeah. us something you don't need on your spare time and 
it's always very helpful, not not required, to have some knowledge. The apprentices that we have at the minute have all turned up with, I'd say, probably the same knowledge as a junior dev. They're knowledgeable because they do it in the free time. They, it's what they enjoy yeah. doing. And they bring a, across a portfolio of all these different apps they've made, stuff like that. And they can jump in straight away, which helps us. But like I said, it doesn't have to. We've just been, we've just been lucky with the people we've, we've, we've been interviewed and taken having that that type of person. Yeah. But we're more than open to have anybody. As long as you're bright and interested, we're more than help, happy to bring you in with no knowledge and train you up and show you how it's have what yeah. the hands-on experience to get a developer at the end of it and it's for a company point of view it's a cheap way of recruiting and one thing that's really good about apprentices you tend to get a lot of loyalty so yeah. if you've trained somebody up uh from nothing basically they they grow as part of the business and they become not become not just a number in your business they're fully involved in every yeah. business because they've grown with you yeah. like i like i've been there yeah, for 12 years perfect example I'm not going anywhere. Uh, and lots of, we've never had an apprentice leave yet. Uh, and we've had wow. eight apprentices, I think we've had or something like that. And, not, and they're all still here. Wow. That, that's amazing. Because the average software developer in the UK, they're, they're in their role for 14 months. Um, it, it's just crazy to think mm. like 14 months, the average. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's another benefit that. No, I didn't even think of is the loyalty is, is retaining your staff. Um because hiring developers costs you know, cost loads in, in infusion recruitment recruitment fees, but then also the time to interview them, um, the person that they're replacing. You know, there might be a gap in the team there. So so yeah, that that's that's super interesting. And then apprenticeship wise, you use a company, what was it, QA is it? QA, yeah. Yeah. So, how do they work with you? The way it's changed now, because all our, all the apprentices we have had have still come from QA. But obviously, when I started, that was a long time ago. The way it worked was I went for an interview with QA to get accepted onto the course that I did. They found me employment. Right. You could you could you could you could have an employer and then come on to QA and they would just marry it up. But you can when I joined, you go to QA and they would find you a role. I don't. I, believe, I know it's still like that now because uh, when we've hired the apprentices at the minute, we ring QA saying, send us some candidates. Right. So they they send us the candidates that they've already got who have passed their initial uh, sort of... I did do it, not like... Yeah, I had like an interview and a bit of a... Bit of Screening. a practical test sort of thing, yeah. Right. So they, they get decent candidates and you can give them criteria if you want a certain person with X, Y, and Z uh, GCSEs or whatever, qualifications, they'll give you those people mm. uh but there's also lots of our apprentices have done their apprenticeship with qa and then they've gone on to do a degree apprentice mainly with man met because uh, they offer degree apprenticeships which again is great for a company because you've got uh you've got a member of staff that has done an apprenticeship with you already, already they're loyal with you yeah. they continue working with you whilst this other apprentice apprenticeship to get a degree which during this time, they're learning all this stuff on the degree, which is they can implement in, uh, in their day to day job. And at the end of it, they get a degree, and we get a member of staff who's yeah. university educated, and it's a win win all around. And then the studying, so the working and the studying, how, how does that look like? So the they're meant to, uh, the, the apprentices can allocate 20% of their time for studying. So basically, one day a week. One. Uh, not that we make our apprentices do this, but they tend to do the apprenticeship stuff in their own time and right. they tend to work. But when they get like a project or an exam that they have to do, we they, they say, oh, I need a day to do my exam. Yeah. I need a day to do it. It's just it's really flexible. But one thing that is good about it is on the development side is they use the tools that we create in work for their apprenticeship. So they have a project where they have to do, that's a, that's a project in Python, for example. Yeah. And they do yeah. They'd, they'll, they'll, they'll speak to us and we're like, what can I do in Python? What can I? And we'll say, oh, you could do, right. try and do this in Python. And then they'll do it and then it'll end up being a, a tool that we might sell. Like a guy, right. a guy who's yeah. an apprenticeship doing a, we, we, we're writing what's called a wall board for FreeCX, which is uh, like a, a, a screen on a, a TV, which has all the stats on for the day. So for like a, a call center, they can see 
who's made the most calls, loads yeah. of different stats. Yeah, inbound, outbound, and all that. That's it. Yeah. And so he's written that in C Sharp uh, with a uh, a Next.js front end, and that's cool. his apprenticeship project. Yeah, and we're gonna and we're gonna sell it because it's a fan- He's made a fantastic tool, and yeah. lots of people got so much interest about it, and it's all part yeah. of his apprenticeship. It's benefiting yeah. us. Whilst he's whilst he's been there, he's not cost us loads of money. So yeah, and then that apprentice as well. You've got to think he's going to be thinking, "Wow, what an achievement! I've created mm, this. That's project. it. That's going to be sold by potential mm-hmm. millions, millions of users." Which, as a junior dev or an apprentice, you'd be you'd be, mm. you'd be absolutely buzzing with it. It's, so, it's, it's low risk, high reward, really, because there's not him building a new project for his course. Very little risk to us, yeah. obviously. If we can monitor, we, we're trying to find projects we can monetize, of course, as a business. But if he's happy sitting there working on his project, and at the end of it, we get a saleable tool, he passes his exams. Mm. And in the meantime, he's offering us benefits el- elsewhere, doing learning our business, supporting customers, doing lots of other things, then it's, yeah. it's a no brainer for us. Um, I have junior devs reach out to me, it seems like on a weekly basis. So I'd love to obviously direct them into your QA and in yellow grids direction. Tech stack wise, what what do you guys use? So you mentioned mm. obviously C sharp, the, the, the next JS part of the JavaScript. So that's that's well. one thing that has been really good about apprentices because I I was very old school. I well I still I still call myself a PHP developer because that's what I'm proficient in yeah. PHP and uh, most of our stuff is written on PHP because I wrote it many years ago and it's maintaining PHP. So when our, our devs come in, they they always have a knowledge of PHP anyway because everybody does. So they, they understand that, but then they bring new technologies to me and I'm like, yeah, that's no way. you can do it. Yeah. And I, I'm, more than, I'm more than happy to learn it and if they know something I don't because they're, cause they're uh, I learned my stuff years ago. They're now yeah. in a training center with these trainers, these trainers are really relevant with what's going on, teaching the students the latest stuff, which I've not got time to learn. Mm. But they, they, they're they learning it because they're Then they come and telling me, showing me, and yeah. I learn it. And so, for example, like I said, uh, this this app he's written is on Node. Uh, is, is Node.js, obviously running on Next.js, and the back end's in C Sharp, and he's using something called, I think called GRPC, which is like a Google protocol to connect the two right. together. Uh, the other apprentice, again, it's lots of it does end up being C sharp based because of the phone system being written in C sharp. Yeah. But the other dev has got involved a lot more with the our infrastructure side of things. So the order processing, the shipment of uh, goods, API stuff that we do with all different providers, that stuff is all written in PHP. And both of them are proficient in PHP, but he tends to he tends to do that side of stuff. Yeah. The other guy tends to do the C sharp side of stuff. That's cool. No, that, that, that's really cool. The fact is that there's not many, because obviously you only worked in one environment um, with Yellow Grid, but sometimes you have spoken to developers where they've had ideas to make things more efficient and they've gone to the CTO or the tech lead and they said, look, there's this new tool and they've just been dismissed. Like, I even mm-hmm. seen years actually. One of my friends, he's, uh, he left his current company because of it. Um, yeah, and they just... They've just been dismissed. So the fact is that you guys and well, you, uh, he's taking that on board, just shows the mm-hmm. type of environment and collaboration you've got, which which is awesome. So I think one thing that companies are going to be are going to be, I think are going to have in the back of their head is, well, I need a senior because I need somebody to start. You know, I need somebody to hit the ground running. But mm-hmm. it's my my take on this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Adam. Is they need to look at the long game because you know. That apprentice that they hire, you know, will be a senior in in five years. You know, mm-hmm. depending on depending on obviously how how quick they 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 develop the skills. So it's the fact that they need to look at the, the long term game where the apprentices that they're hiring now will turn into seniors. And I, mm-hmm. I should have pulled up some data on on the um, you know on the um, on the retention rate of of apprentices mm-hmm. software like but. You know, you haven't lost. You, you know, you've been there twelve years, and you haven't lost. And mm-hmm. just, I'd, just I'd go as far to say, I reckon 
the, the gap between a junior dev and a senior dev, the time that takes, will be the same as an apprentice getting to a senior dev because I'd, I'd be surprised if, well, to be fair, lots of the apprentices that come to us have done sort of some sort of coding boot camp anyway. But right. they, uh, they tend to have knowledge from being a hobbyist, from working at home, doing their own little, yeah. little apps, like I said. So the knowledge is there. It's just molding them and directing them into what you need from them as well. And it's, I understand the argument that if you need someone senior, sometimes if you need someone senior, you need someone senior and the apprentice route isn't the, the route. Yeah. But if you have the time that you think, I need a senior dev, but I can, I can almost uh, have the foresight of saying I can get an apprentice in. And if I give them a year, two years, they might be at that level. And yeah. during that time, they've helped me with other projects, cost me very little. And at the end of it, I've got a, a senior dev yeah. that's loyal to me and knows my company inside out. Yeah, because even even senior devs will you know, can take up to six months to, to get going because it's a new team, it's a new system. You know, they might be learning different frameworks. It might be you know a slightly different tech stack. So you know, it's I don't I, you know it's, it's very rare for somebody to come in straight away and and, and hit the ground running. So yeah, no, that's uh, that's super interesting. And I think there's tons of companies that that will benefit from from, from apprenticeships. Um, I'm trying to think if there's there's anything else, but I think we've, we've pretty much covered tons of it. Um, yeah. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll I'll link your details um, in the bottom. Um, you happy for me to to put your email address? Yeah. Of yeah. Um, I'll put your email address in the bottom, and um, and I'll I'll put your LinkedIn, and then anybody that's interested in getting more information, you know, you can go on the Yellowbird website, go on the QA website. Yeah. I'll I'll reach out to you. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's literally like three people I think off the top of my head that have done a, an off coders bootcamp course that that messaged me um, over the last few weeks and said, oh, you know, I'm looking. Have you, have you got anything? Um, mm -hmm. So so yeah, I can point me in your direction, mate. But no, it's a been, yeah. It's been really, really nice speaking with you, Adam, and uh, thank you for your time. Anytime. Always come back when you need me. Cheers, lovely. Thank you for listening to DevLogic. 